What's up guys, welcome back to the channel, my name is Dean aka The Blue Crusader and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to find bees, how to use bees and how to create honey and beehives in Minecraft. Let's get into the video. So let's begin where bees actually are and where they spawn in the world. So there's three actual predominant main biomes that you can actually find bees in in Minecraft. So the first bee in the flower forest, then the plains, and then also the sunflower plains. These are all the primary spawn areas that you're actually going to find the bees in. Now, you may be able to find them in some of the other biomes, or I might be wrong. So you might be able to actually find them in other places, but for the most part, these are the three standard and primary biomes where you're going to find them much more easier because these are the kind of sunnier and grassier biomes in the game. So look around these biomes if you want to find the bee spawns much easier. Now this is because you want to adventure to these sunny areas because you'll find more of these bees. Like I said I think they do spawn in other areas but this is predominantly where the highest frequency spawns are. Now bees are neutral and they won't attack unless you actually provoke them. So if you attack bees whilst they're farming honey for an example they will swarm you in a group okay but for the most part they are actually passive and neutral so you can run around near them you can follow them and they're not going to attack you it's not like a wasp where they're just going to attack anything they see bees in minecraft are neutral now attacks from these bees if you do actually attack them first and they attack you they will briefly poison and damage you and these entire swarms just like what you'd expect from bees in real life or killer bees these swarms will actually chase you down if you attack them okay but i'm pretty sure that bees move quite slowly in minecraft i'm not sure if they change that but bees do move quite slow in comparison to the player so if you do have these entire swarms on you it's not always going to be too much of an issue now after the first attack the bees will die just like they naturally do in nature basically they use the sting to poison you and then they die so they'll die but one of the downsides of this is is if you attack the bees and then they die they'll drop no loot so there's not really any benefit for the bees dying or you killing the bees you can make them angry by either destroying or knocking down a hive or nest or attacking an individual bee they'll wander from the nest to actually collect pollen from the flowers nearby so if you actually see them close by actually pollinating the flowers and collecting this pollen to bring back to the nest this is a good way to actually find where the bees nest is or where the other bees are if you only see one for an example but for the most part they'll actually go pretty close to the nest to actually harvest these flowers and they'll go around the same kind of flower or the same collection of flowers and they'll keep going back to that area they don't just randomly wander off to further flowers so whatever's close to them or whatever they like they'll keep usually harvesting that set of flowers bees do breed using these flowers which is why you should also collect some if you want to breed bees on your farm or in your base so you could obviously make a honey collection or harvesting plantation or farm and use these flowers to actually breed these bees and these bees will fly back to their nest to place their collected pollen inside and they need to do this a few different times to actually make honey so don't randomly just go and break the nest or try and dive in finding the honey because for the most part they're not actually going to get the honey until they've done this pollination process a few times which we'll actually cover a little bit later in this video so at what point can you actually not find the bees so during the rain weather and also at the nighttime hours when everything goes dark and when there's rainy weather these bees will actually sleep and you won't be able to find them during these periods if you go out at nighttime where there's all the monsters and zombies you're not going to find a single individual bee unless it's some kind of glitch so you do have to wait till the morning time and you do have to wait till the weather's clear this would obviously make sense now the easiest way for us to actually find a beehive like we slightly touched on earlier is to actually first follow the bee that you find so if you find one bee for an example who's near some flowers or just flying around follow this bee because it's passive it's not going to attack you so you can just follow this bee and then follow it home and that's where you'll find the hive so this is the best strategy it might take a bit of a while for it to go back home especially when it's around a flower but if you do actually follow it for a while it will lead you back to the nest now 
Now, honey and the honeycomb, which we actually get, are used in different separate ways, okay? So, honey can be bottled to be drank like a potion, but this is kind of more used as a food and for its benefits that it actually gives you. And by using the honey, you can also use it to craft sugar, which can be useful because, for the most part before this, the only way to make sugar was from sugar cane. Whereas, the honeycomb itself is actually more of a crafting ingredient than a food like the honey is. So, this honeycomb can actually be combined with wood and planks and we can actually use this to craft a new beehive on the crafting bench. If you want to create a bee farm and make your own honey, this is a way to do it by collecting the honeycomb. I'll cover it a little bit later in a few moments on how you can actually collect this honeycomb easily and how you can actually use it to make nests and also transport the bees and collect them without losing them. The purpose of finding bees in their nests in Minecraft is for this honey and the honeycomb so you can start bee farming yourself. First, we need an empty bottle when we find a full nest or hive in order to actually harvest this honey. Obviously a glass bottle is pretty easy to craft so there shouldn't be any worries with this or you can find it in a dungeon. But first, the bees must store 5 stacks of pollen before we can get the honey. This is what I was talking about earlier, they will leave the nest, go to pollinate flowers and bring this pollen back to their nest and this is a process that needs to be done 5 times so they need to store 5 stacks of this in the nest. But you're wondering how do we actually know that they've done this 5 times? Is there some sort of indication? Well there is. So when the nest is ready to be harvested for this honey, the texture appearance will actually change slightly to indicate this, which will show nectar leaking from the holes with a dripping particle effect on the ground. So look out for this if you want an indicator on whether the nest has been fully pollinated and whether it's producing honey. You can also use shears on the nest itself, this is really important, and using the shears on the nest directly will break it completely into honeycombs. So you can use use these to collect them and then craft another nest again later with some wooden planks like we mentioned earlier. The beehives and bee nests I refer to don't really have many differences. The only difference between a hive and a nest is basically one is a naturally occurring spawn and the other is the version which we have to craft ourselves using the honeycomb. So I believe the nest is found in the wild and the hives we actually craft. Correct me if I'm wrong. The hives can be crafted to make a colony of bees to farm for honey and for sugar processing. So it can be used for honey and sugar like we mentioned earlier and it can be really beneficial especially if you want another food source in the game in survival mode. These bees can actually benefit flowers around them as well. This is one of the coolest features because it actually allows them to grow when they interact with them when they're pollinating the flowers so this makes them more useful for your garden. So if you do have like a cool mansion or some kind of home and you make a bee farm in the back of your garden and you have a lot of flowers nearby this will actually promote the nature in the area and the flora. You can actually utilize dispensers which is really awesome so you can use these dispensers to automatically bottle honey that you create if placed right and you also need to use redstone with it. So if you use the redstone and dispensers in the right sequence you can use it to automate the process of bottling your honey. This can actually create automated honey collection and bottling farms and it's just one of the many cool things which you can actually do with redstone. Putting shears inside these dispensers can actually automatically collect the honeycomb from the nearby hives. We mentioned earlier if you use shears on the hives it will break them into honeycomb so using the shears inside the dispensers will completely automate this process. These are just ways that you can make everything more industrialized in Minecraft using the different machines. To move hives and nests is actually a hard process okay so especially if you don't want to anger the bees there. We talked earlier how the bees are definitely for the most part passive and neutral but like I said if you attack or anger them by destroying the hives or killing one of the bees they're gonna swarm you so this is the really hard part. Now you need to use a tool that has a specific enchantment on it to destroy the bee nest. Now what this is is an enchanted tool using silk touch. This is actually put onto the tool using an enchantment table. Usually silk touch when used for an example if you broke a cobweb with silk touch it would give you the cobweb item instead of it being destroyed and just not dropping anything so this is where silk touch comes into 
into play. It means that you actually save the block when breaking it, as well as the bees inside it when you place it back down, or you would destroy it without this enchantment. So the great thing about this is using it, you don't just destroy the hive, you keep the hive, but you also keep all the bees inside the hive. So if you want to transport it onto your property or at the back of your house, for an example, all the bees will stay inside the hive and then continue to do what they were doing before, which is really nice. Without using Silk Touch, the bees will be extremely angry and most likely attack you for destroying the hive or basically breaking the block, so this is kind of a must. Crafting a campfire and placing it under the nest is also a nice little neat trick we can do. So if we place this under the nest, it'll create smoke and this actually knocks out the bees, which makes them passive and it means that they won't leave their home or attack you so you can harvest all the bees with the hive. So this is what is really important. So like we mentioned before with the silk touch, it's really recommended that you actually place the fire underneath so they don't leave it when you attack the bees or break the home. So this is another way to keep all the bees inside the hive. So this is how to find bees in Minecraft, how to bee farm using a few different tips and tricks and the main processors, how to make honey and automate everything like an industrial way of factory farming and also have a bee farm on your home. So this is basically everything to do with bees in Minecraft, where to find them, how to use them and basically how to reap the benefits without getting killed or getting swarmed. So if you enjoyed these tips, make sure to like the video and leave a comment below. Let me know that the video was useful. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next time.